Good morning, Pastor Sean here. Today is Friday, April 19th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, continuing in the small catechism, we're up to the fourth commandment today. And uh, what we finished off um, in the first three commandments is what we refer to as the, the first table of the law. Um, we look at the, the, the Ten Commandments as having two tables, uh, the first being the first three commandments, uh, the rest being, or the second table being the remaining ones. And what, what these two tables cover is that the first three commandments address our relationship with God, and the, the second addresses how, uh, about our relationship with our neighbor. Um, and you can see clearly how the first three commandments deal with how, you know, how we regard God in our lives. And then uh, the remaining ones are how we interact and deal with the people around us, how we are not to do or what to do, um, and, and so on and so forth. So... Luther actually describes um, the fourth commandment as the first and greatest commandment in relation to our neighbors. So uh, the fact that this is listed first in the um, neighbor commandments uh, indicates not just a like um, first in, in just numerical order, but just in, in importance and, and greatness too. So fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. So, um, you know, honor your father and mother certainly most directly applies to our, our parents. Um, but Luther points out here how um, this expands to other authorities that are in place over us. So um, whether they're kind of uh, authorities in... in uh, in our workplace or, or the government or whatever, that we are to give um, honor to, to all of the authorities over us. Um, because all of these authorities, in fact, any authority beyond parent um, derives its authority really through the parents. That um, because the parents cannot provide um, all, the, all the various things for, that we need to get by, um, you know, they, they have to kind of concede or, or concede um, to share this authority with with others. So imagine like a, you're raising a child. Well, um, you as a parent need to work, need to go out and, and may provide for the family. Well, you can't necessarily stay home and or you might not even be. Um, uh, what do I want to say uh, qualified to to teach. I mean, it's it's. It's hard to be a teacher, right? It requires uh, um, not just a, a specific education, but a certain temper temperament <laughs> um, that uh, that some people might, some parents just don't have. And so, a parent will will give some of their their parental authority over to teachers, schools, and so they you know place their children in the care of, of teachers for a portion of the day, um, and the teacher now exercises that that um, kind of authority over the child in the realm of education. So uh, this authority just kind of um, flows out of the, the authority of the parent. Now, Luther does point out that, um, you know, that this is not just to love your parents, but to honor them. Um, that this is kind of a, a distinct kind of thing that, um, you know, it is not just loving because, you know, we, we, can, we can certainly love um, all sorts of people. But to honor somebody is to um, hold them in, in the highest esteem, like second only to God. Um, to to treat them with dignity and respect, um, and and to treat them as they are in a higher office level, whatever you want to say. Um, so that is kind of the distinction there. I do have two um, two sections that I would like to read from the large catechism that might fill out a little bit of of what uh, what we're getting at here. So, large catechism says this, Learn, therefore, first, what is the honor towards parents required by this commandment, to wit, that they be held in distinction and esteem above all things as the most precious treasure on earth. Okay, one. 
Furthermore, that also in our words we observe modesty towards them. Do not accost them roughly, haughtily, and defiantly, but yield to them and be silent, even though they go too far. Uh, thirdly, that we should show them such honor also by works, that is, with our body and possessions, that we serve them, help them, and provide for them when they are old, sick, infirm, or poor, and all that not only gladly, but with humility and reverence, as doing it before God. For he who knows how to regard them in his heart will not allow them to suffer want or hunger, but will place them above him and at his side, and will share with them whatever he has and possesses. So, um, you know, we, we certainly see the, the high place that, that parents are, are supposed to have in our lives, that we, we lift them up, that we um, regard them um, highly above all, that we are uh, providing for them. We're looking after them in, in their sickness, in their infirmity you know, as, as they grow older, um, in their poverty, whatever, whatever it is that they're going through, that the, the children take care of their parents, that they look after them. Um, and Luther talks about how, you know, that it is, you know, as, as the, the parent has um, done this for the child, so the child, you know, returns the, the, the grace there. Now, it's interesting, one thing to point out um, here, where he says, uh, yield to them and be silent, even though they go too far, that Luther does acknowledge this kind of, well, the very real possibility, because, you know, everybody is a sinner, um, that parents may go too far and do something where, um, or, or treat their children in such a way that our, our reaction, our thought to this would be, well, as soon as a parent does this or treats their children in this such a way, they no longer deserve that honor. So this commandment no longer, um, has any bearing. Uh, Luther, Luther, has has some quibbles with that, um, you know. Though they go too far, that that we we still show them honor. Um, that the commandment does not go away simply because somebody else is sinful, and this has been always been a, a, a very difficult and very sensitive kind of thing to teach, especially when dealing with parents. When you've got um, you know a, a lot of people who've had very put it lightly difficult relationships with their parents, um, whether they be just um, uh, strained or going into full on abuse and, you know, such a, a gross abuse of, of what, um, a parent is supposed to do and, and the, the, the awful things that can be done. Um, certainly even getting into kind of criminal acts, um, and to, you know, it, it's when you have a situation like that and to hear something like this, where the commandment says, no, you must honor them. Um, is, is very, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's hard <laughs> to say the least. But there is, if as you keep reading in the large catechism, um, getting towards the end of the, uh, the explanation of the commandment, Luther does write this, and this is kind of a key thing to include in all this. It says, in addition, it would be well to preach to the parents also, and such as bear their office, as to how they should deport themselves toward those who are committed to them for their government. For although this is not expressed in the Ten Commandments, it is nevertheless abundantly enjoined in many places in the Scripture, and God desires to have it embraced in this commandment when He speaks of father and mother. So, um, there there is a portion of this that goes to the parents, and He He says even though this is not in the commandment, it is um, kind of implied in the commandment and attested to in the rest of Scripture. And this is what He says. For he does not wish, for God does not wish to have in this office and government knaves and tyrants, nor does he assign to them this honor, that is, power and authority to govern, that they should have themselves worshipped, but they should consider that, that they are under obligations of obedience to God, and that first of all, they should earnestly and faithfully discharge their office, not only to support and provide for the bodily necessities of their children, servants, subjects, etc., but most of all to train them to the honor and praise of God. Therefore, do not think that this is left to your pleasure and arbitrary will, but that it is a strict command and injunction of God, to whom also you must give account for it. So the um, the obligation is on the parents to treat their to not abuse their children, to not treat this um, office of parent as something to be uh, lorded over or or you know essentially making themselves God in that relationship. Um, and so just as the, the child is, um, commanded to honor mother and father, um, so also our mother and father commanded to, um, faithfully and lovingly 
look after their children as God would have them do. So um, this is a very key thing. So um, certainly we we know that we are all sinners and and parents and children break this break their commandments you know often and it is very difficult um, to to um, be that godly you know God pleasing parent a God pleasing child and and to have the relationship as as God desires it to be but this commandment speaks to this you know we should always be on both sides parent and children striving for that kind of a relationship. Now, in situations though where where there there is that gross um, breaking of of the relationship, um, either parent to child, child to parent, however it works, um, you know we I can I can tell you my my way of approaching it is um, is to say like well you know it's it's it doesn't change the commandment. You know, especially in the case of a of a parent who is 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 grossly negligent in their parenting duties, um, so that it doesn't negate the commandment for the child to honor their father and mother. However, um, the the parent has also severely transgressed God's command and direction um, as well, and so it is not a thing where where I would press. You know, in, in for the child in that situation to be like, oh, you need to honor your your mother or, or your father, um, but to uh, to recognize that in the commandment, um, the desire there is is for you know that office to be honored, and insofar as that parent is in that office, um, there is honor for that, but um, you know the the activities of the person in that office are not always honorable. And so in, in these things, we, we, we deal with it in the ways that we, we can, that, that we have to, in order to, um, you know, sometimes protect ourselves and to prevent ourselves from, from further being hurt or, or damaged or whatever. Um, so unfortunately this is a scenario where, you know, sin just oftentimes abounds and, um, Rather than kind of beating people over the head with the law in that instance, um, you really need to um, bring in the gospel and the good news of forgiveness, of grace, of mercy, of uh, peace, even when there's none felt. Um, and certainly, like I said, forgiveness, not just telling, oh, well, you, mu- you must forgive, but forgiveness for those situations where we're unable to forgive. And especially in, in family relationships, these are very difficult um, delicate, fragile situations, um, and can be very difficult for, uh, for parents and children to, to get to that forgiveness. Um, so that's where I encourage forgiveness for the lack of forgiveness and, uh, trying to chart that way forward. It's, there's, there's, there's a, this one in particular, there's a lot of nuance. Um, and so dealing with it contextually and with it situation by situation is crucial. Um, but uh, the, the the heart of the commandment is just that the the office of parent is highly regarded and, and of high esteem, and so not only should be treated as such by the children, but certainly f- um, uh, acted in that office by the parents um, in the same um, regard. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> there we go. Fourth commandment. All right. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Friday. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.